All right, all right. Hadi Femi Grace here again. And in this episode of Juice, we'll be doing the manor route. And to give you a quick recap of what we've been doing so far, in our first episode, we went over the AI route where we quickly created a blog project using the AI suggestion. However, in the second episode, we were able to quickly realize some of the limitations we had with the AI route. So we couldn't get the comment for a specific post. There are a lot of things that were not in place. Also, the category was showing in objects. Although, one thing you should realize is that the AI route was meant to make your work faster. So it wasn't meant to be perfect, but to give you the blueprint of what you want. So what you needed to do was to go back in there to fix the necessary things you need to fix. So in today's episode, instead of going with the AI route, we want to create things manually. We are still not writing code anyways. So let's jump onto our screen and venture into this. So as you can see on my screen, I have the three projects from our last episode. And in case you've not seen the other episode that we recommend you, go check it out. Because I think there are more of prerequisites to this. You need the idea of where we are coming from before you venture into this. Well, might not be necessary, but I will recommend that. So I'll put the link to that in the description section. Go check it out. So back here, um, to create a project manually, you click on the new project button here. So we have to button C actually. And also, I've not really shown us the documentation for this before. So if you want to check out the documentation, you should click on the menu here and you view documentation. And we've actually put a lot of time into the documentation such that it's so detailed enough that it gets us up and running. So we have the brief overview of Jews, what Jews has to offer. We have the quick links of what you can explore. So get us started, interface overview, models, and so on. So I'll be going over this. I will recommend we check it out whenever we want. So back here, we want to create a manual project. Let's create it. And this I'm going to call it custom blog projects. I've created it before. Yeah, actually, I've recorded a version of this video before. It was unfortunate that I wasn't recording. Yeah, I realized it after I was done. Quite unfortunate. So that's what happens to us sometimes when we try to create content. And as such, in order to boost our morale and encourage us some more, if you've not subscribed, kindly do so. This is going to go a long way. All right, so let's proceed. All right, our project was created successfully. That's fast. That's a fluid flow. I believe we all like it. And talking about liking it, I would appreciate your comments after this video telling me what and what we like about Juice. And if we've not used Juice yeah. I think you should. It's a free version, obviously. And if you want to explore the custom function, there's a trial version available for you. So you can check it out. Give me your feedback. Let me know what you guys feel. We are trying to change the world yet. Begin. So yeah, back to the custom block projects. Um, we have the projects. Um, we were able to access the project by clicking this. I believe we've been doing that already. So that should be straightforward. So what we've not been doing is working with the apps. We just went through it at some point, but we've not really created anything. But according to Django, which juice is kind of based off of, yeah, that's the correct English. It's recommended that once you created your project, the first thing you should do is create the auth app. Because setting up auth after you might have created other things can disrupt your process. So based on that, we're going to come down to the auth section and set up our ops. So the setup is quite straightforward. If you come back here, when you visit here and you don't have ops, you have this page presented to you telling you that you do not have authentication setup for your project kit. So let's set it up. And like I said, this is quite straightforward. You can either sign in with a username or an email. So you have to tell it which is which here. So for the case of our blog project, we are going to be using email. And you have this default information, and I believe they are self-explanatory. So I'll proceed. So when you're setting up auth, if you remember, you specify that you want to use either email or username. 
If you are choosing username, then it's going to require three things from you when you are registering. It's going to require the username, the email address, and the password. But since we specify the email address, it's going to require two things, the email and the password. So the email is usually used to undo for recovery of password and so on. You can't use your username anyways. However, in a case where you want to require more information when creating a user, that is where this page comes in. So here you can specify more fields that will be required when creating a user, when registering a user. Okay? We won't bother about that here. We don't need an extra field. However, this is going to be the same thing as when we are creating our model fields. So stay attentive until we get to that session. I'll try not to forget. So um, with that explained, we can click on save here and that should create the auth process. Another thing I think we should create ahead of time is the pagination control. So by default, the pagination control is not defined. So as you can see, it is not specified. However, it is quite straightforward and all you have to do is just set it up and proceed. So by default, it specifies 10 item per page. If you want, you can change it to 20. I think for our blog project, 20 might be okay. So let's create it. So again, that was price preferred. We have our pagination control already. So the next thing we want to do is to come back home or create our app from here. Actually, let's come back home. And you'll be wondering, what does home mean here? So in the scope of our project, home means the root folder. So this is Azumi you are coding now. The home is going to act as your root folder. And within your root folder, you are going to see all the apps you have created. And talking about app, according to Django, app is more like a folder that associates together every item related to each other. Yeah, that's what it does. Um, and in the past, we've actually used app in the wrong way by creating everything within just single app. And that would work, but the whole idea is to make things straightforward, streamlined, and better for understanding so yeah that's by the way in the case of what we'll be doing today a single app is going to be enough and as such we can just create one so you can click here or you can click here both of it works so for this we are going to be creating the blog app and we don't need description because jargon is going to create work for us and as you can see here yeah, it did so moving on to the app we can then see for each app, we have the building blocks of Django, which is models, serializers, views, and URLs. And serializers is not given to you by default because Django itself is a full-fledged system. However, since we are exploring the RESTful API side of it, we need to introduce serializer. And just gives you serializer out of the box because you are exploring the RESTful API part of it, okay? So moving forward, we need theory models for our projects, just like we had in the last one. We need the categories, we need the posts, and we need the comments. And let's get to that. So for the model, we need the category, let's add category. We don't need the description, it's price self-explanatory. For our category, all we need here is just a created field. We are not really doing much with the category, it's just to serve as a reference. So for the field, we need the name field. And um, this is going to be a character field. Um, the category name, I don't think it should be more than 100 in lengths. Yeah. Then for the attribute, the name should be unique, which means we can't have multiple categories with the same name. So yeah, that's about that. Then the next one is going to be the description. And the description is not very important, but yeah, sometimes you want to describe what the category does. So for the description, we have the test field. And because the description is not very important, we can have it to be null and none. And with that done, we can add a category. So before we save it, yeah, we have these options. So we have the ordering option, which kind of tells um, Django how it should return the category, show the items when they are coming back. By default, it's ordered by the ID in ascending order. And yeah, I think we don't need to change that in case of category. Maybe in the future ones, we might have two, but for category, I don't think we need to change the order. 
We really don't care about the order in which the category comes out, okay? However, one thing we care about is how the category is represented. And if you remember from the last episode, the category was represented in form of an object, which doesn't make any sense. And that's what Django does by default. That's how it represents your item by default. However, we can control it to show whatever we want. In this case, for category, we want to represent it as a name. And that means for each category item, the name is shown. And that's great to create that particular issue. So yeah, let's use that and let's save this. Now with this saved, we have the first model. Let's move on to the next one quickly. So the next one is going to be the post model. For the post model, again, the description is quite self-explanatory. I don't think we need that. However, I think for the post, we need the UID as ID. Yeah, technically, we might not necessarily based on what we are going to be doing in the future by using slug. But the idea is UID is much more visually appealing. Yeah, that's, that's the way I see it. A um, lot of people have a lot of things to as associate with UID, but for me, ID is enough. The only time I think a UID is important is when you come to your URL and you want to have an appealing ID information there. Yeah. Then for the post, we need the created a field and we need the updated a field. Created a field obviously is important because we want to know when the post was created. Updated that field is going to be important for when we update the post. And it's also what we are going to use to order the post. So the latest one, the most recently updated post will come out first. Okay. So moving on, let's add fields here. So for the field, we need the category, obviously. And if you are familiar with the Django environment, a category is going to be a foreign key in this case because, yeah, that's the relationship with posts. So, yeah, let's find the foreign key. And there we have it. And in terms of the related name, this is more like a reverse relationship thing. So, let's assume we are on the category site and we want to get the post associated with that category. So, what name do we reference? And, um, yeah. That's where this comes in. So here we are going to call it posts. So what that means is where we are on the category site and we want to get posts associated with that category, we can just say category.posts and we are going to get all the posts associated with it. Then finally, we have the undelete control here. We have three of them. We have the cascade, the set null, and the protect. The cascade means where we delete a category or rather when we delete the category associated with that post, it automatically deletes that post as well. The set norm means when we delete that category, post is not deleted, but instead the field, the category field itself is set to null. And finally, the protect means you are not allowed to delete that particular post. So in our case, we are going to use cascade and we'll see. Actually, I feel like juice allows you to teach Django even better. Yeah, that's me just saying that. Okay, moving on, uh, we have the author because we have to be authenticated for us to be able to create a post. And as such, we want to associate a post to a specific author. So for the author scenario, we have a field type called auth field, which is not available in Django by default. This is something Juice introduced here. And the whole idea is that that field associates you with the authenticated user. That's as simple as that. So yeah, let's specify that odd field and let's specify the relationship type. And I think um, many to many is kind of complex. I think you might need tutorial for that. It's not complex in the case of use bots. It's kind of complex in the case of um, database by default. Foreign key and what was seems to be quite straightforward. And most times you can achieve what you would want to achieve uh, on many to many with foreign key. So most times we just use foreign key and that's what I get to be using here as well. And again, we've established how related names are created. So again, for this is going to be post because from the author side, we can now do author.posts.on. Yeah. Then finally, we have the undelete flow again and we are using cascade as well. So we have attributes such as null and unique, and I don't think we need any of that for this. So we can add. 
So now let's move on to the basic types, which is the title. The title is a character field, which I believe 100 or maybe 150 should be enough. And for the attribute, I think the title should be unique. Okay. Moving on, let's add the content. Or uh, maybe for the content, let's get the slug. Like I said initially that the UI the field is not very important for the post. And that's because what we'll be showing on our URL will be the slug and not the UID. So yeah, this is us creating that slug here. And uh, we'll look for the slug field. And we have a slug field because there's a special operation done in that regards. And because we selected the slug field, it requires us to specify where the source for the slug is coming from. And as you guessed it, the source is going to be the title. And I think that's all we need here. So now we can move on to the contents. So for the content, the type should be test field because obviously we need more information there. And I think that's all for the contents. So I believe that's all we need in regards to our fields. Let's move on. And for the order here, we actually need to specify the updated ads. And it's going to be in descending order. So the latest comes first. We don't need string representation for this. But just for cleanup sake, let's have the title here because title is unique. So I get to see unique titles. And we can save. All right. So the last model is going to be the comments model. And for this, we can also use the UI diffuse. We can include created ads. We don't need updated ads for this because we won't be updating the comments. We will just be able to either create it or delete it if we need to. So yeah, let's move forward. Let's add the field. The first one will be the author of the comments. And the author of the comment is going to be the out field. Then we have the foreign key related name is going to be comments. And on delete is going to be cascade. That's pressed straightforward. Then we have the meta first. Okay, let's proceed. Um, we have the post in this case. Um, the post is going to be a foreign key and is going to be related to the posts. And the related name is going to be comments. That will be post comments. Then the cast the delete is going to be cascaded, and we have that. Then finally, we have the com comment itself. And the type is going to be a text field, and that will be all. Then we can save this. So ordering on the comment, I think we want to order the comment by created ads and it's going to be in ascending order. So which means the oldest will come first. So we should see the first person that comments rather than having the latest one. Then for the split representation, I can't really find any field to represent it with here. Um, yeah, I can't. Yeah. So yeah, we will leave that as it is and we'll save it. So we have the three models we need. And technically, with use, you are done. You really don't need to do any other thing. You can just go ahead to test your server and you have everything running. Because what user has done is, whenever you create a model, it automatically generates a serializer, a view, and a URL for it. That's not a leverage you have with general. So yeah, another reason to use juice. Okay. However, just to confirm that we have generated those, let's go to the serializers and voila, we have it. And if you want to see what is going on, you can just go to the view and view the code. So the category serializer is quite straightforward. It references a model serializer and it references our category model and it's returning all the fields. However, if you go into the post serializer, we find out that things are a little bit uh, strange here. I won't call it strange because we've not written a wrong code. However, what is strange is that we never defined this. So how did it happen? So I've been writing Django for over seven years now. And one thing that I've stuck with me is the fact that, yeah, a lot of these things are the same thing we keep repeating all these things. And that was what actually prompted Juice in the first place. The fact that we repeat all these things, it means we can have a system that does them even faster. So as a result of that, this is the field that makes sense when you are managing 
in related fields. So the related field itself is category, but by default, the category is a foreign key and the expected parameter for that is going to be an object. And most times you don't want to send an object through your JSON para, okay? So the way to handle that is by having this handled on the serializer side. So the category itself is going to be renamed to a read-only field, which means you only show the category when you are querying the data out. However, when you are sending data in, the only field you need is the category ID. And that's just an ID, that's just a single parameter rather than an object. So that's the abstraction that Juice has done here, making this much more easier. So yeah, we add that with the post realizer, and we add that again with the comment realizer, quite straightforward. And if we move on to the view section, again, we have the same thing. Like I said, you can decide to just write and start your server now and everything should work. However, there is a little bit of limitations from our last video. One of the limitations is the fact that we cannot query the comments because there is no way to actually do that. And what we are expecting is that we should be able to get comments for a particular post. So what we are looking at is a scenario whereby when we specify the stop of a particular post to the comment URL, we should get comments associated with that post uh, without slot. So yeah, let's move on with that. So if we come back to comment and come to edit. So this is the first part. So we have the basic info, set up basic information about your views. And currently here, allow method has not is selected. And if you have not is selected, it means every method is allowed. However, in case you want to specify what method is allowed, you can come here and choose the method you want to deal with. And also, you have CLIs that specified already. Remember, you created this view for you, so it has everything specified already. So moving forward, we also have this field that defines what field is going to act as a lookup field, what field is going to act as a filter field, and so on. And if we are in a pagination or not. So the comments can be paginated and enable pagination is in this. And in case we want to search a comment, I think the only option we have here is the comments. We can't search by any other thing. This is recommended by Juice. It feels like the comment is the only field that makes sense to be searchable. However, if you come to the filter fields, you can filter the author or comment. So what that means is you can filter a comment by the author. Maybe you want to get comment by just a specific author as so well. Okay? So, yeah, I think we can add the author and comment as the filter, and we can add the comment as the search. However, that's not really where we are going to. Where we are going to is the custom function, which I believe is the game changer for Juice V2. Juice V1 does not have this, and that was the major limitation to me. What Juice V1 has to offer is just crowd operation and most times I found out that people love to do specific things. Like for instance, in your e-commerce project, you want to manage how your operation, how your inventory list gets updated after an operation and so on. Okay? So as a result of that, custom function is going to assist you with doing all that. So custom function is literally you writing code, but in GUI. So let's explore this. So according to custom function, what it's actually doing is overriding the methods. In Django and in Juice, the methods we've made available includes the post method, the get method, the create method, and the delete method. And you get to see all of that. So in the case of the comments, the get method is what we want to override. Because when we are querying our comments, we are making a request to the get method. And that's when we want to determine where the comments should be queried for. So yeah, let's override the get method. Let's add our action. And in the case of the action, we have several actions and they are kind of explained. So the get operation retrieves a record from a specified model based on it, based on the filter. And that's actually the one we want to venture into. However, you can take a look at all the other methods. And if you want, you can share through the documentation on how all the methods work. So if we click on the get method, 
Here you'll be required to specify the model you want to query for. So in this case, the model is the comment. And now you have to specify your filter. You don't have to, but in this case, we need to because we want to filter our comment based on the post slot. So yeah, let's do that. So let's build the filter. So the field we want to filter on the comment model is the post slot. So all this field has been queried by juice, so everything is quite easy. And the operation we want to perform is the exact operation because the slot is going to be exact. So the value here is going to be query params, even though we have the option for quads. And the reason we are not choosing quad is that we are not defining a special URL for this. So quads will require us to have a path definition. So you specify how your path would be, um, where the quad is coming from and so on. We are not doing that here. So instead we are going to use query params. And the value we want to specify on the query perhaps is going to be the post slot. So yeah, that's about that. So now we can click on done. So we have one filter, we can view it whenever we want to. You can delete it if you need to. So again, click done. And this is a get operation. It returns every query. However, in case you want to just get the first item, you can click on this um, shared bus. However, we need everything. So yeah. We are going to get everything. So here it requires to specify the result variable. So what you've gotten, it needs to assign it to a specific variable so that it can be used in your subsequent actions. So in this case, we are going to have it as comments. And that's all about the get action. We can click on add, we have the get action. So we have the get action. However, that's all we've done. What next do we need to do? We have to comment now but we've not returned it. And as you guessed, we have an action called return. And the return is great to both cater for where you are returning your large contents or where you are returning just a single content for get query sets. Because under it here, what we're actually overriding is the get query sets. And let's see how we define the return. So we enter a key which we don't really need, but we enter in a week. And this key is made available because of the subsequent return for where you are working with the create method, update method, and delete method. So the value here is going to come from the result variable. And because it's going to be a reference to other variables you've created, it's going to be available here. So the variable we are using here is the comments from the comment uh, model from the get action. So, because this is a get operation, it's bringing us serializer. And you can specify a serializer to determine how the comments or the result is rendered. But in our own case, because we just need to return the query set, we don't need to specify a serializer. And as such, you can click on add. So, the status code is a required field, so you have to specify it, even though it's not required when dealing with the get query set. So now with all things done, let's click on add. And I think that's all we need to do. So we can click on done. And that's our custom function. So you can add more, you can overwrite the post method and so on. And once you are done, you can click on updates. And voila, there you have it. So if you view the code now, you see what that's done. And as you can see, it has overrode the get query set. And this was your field, um, few tasks you set and yeah, this is the sesh and so. So if you want, you can go over this and see how it actually works. And coming back here, we also have an update to do on the post view. So let's take a look at the view code in, by default. You can see that by default, we don't have any filter field set. We don't have a search field. We need to fill that. And also you see that there's no virus. Yeah, I don't think we need to do that for the posts. So one thing we need to do though is to set the loop up field. Because by default, it's going to be using the ID, or in this case, the UID to look up for the retrievable value. However, what we want to use is the slot. And if you care to know what lookup field is all about, do leave your request in the comment and I'll do well to explain, okay? So now let's edit this. And in here, we have the same thing, just like we have the comments, so we can move on. So yeah, for the lookup field, we want to use the slot. 
So we have other options, but I think the slot is the one we want to use. And for the filter field, yeah, I think we can filter by the auto, by the title, by the slot, maybe not the content. Yeah, for the search field, we can search using the title, we can search to the slot as well, and we can search to the content. And the way the search works is, is going to consider all these parameters when you are entering your search keyword. So when you are entering your search keyword, the title, the slot, content will be considered for what to be searched. So moving on, we don't need the cluster function for this, so we can update. Then finally, for the category view, I don't think we need a pagination for this. Unless maybe you want to have your category rendered somewhere and there are so much that we needed them to be paginated. But in our case, I don't think we need to. So I'll come here and disable pagination. And I would update. So if we check this once again, you'll find that our pagination class is set to none. I don't think we need to filter category or search category. Then if you check this, you see that the pagination class is not defined here. And what that means is that it's going to use the default pagination control as the pagination control. And with that, we are technically done, or rather, we're actually done, because the URLs also is created for us, and it's already catering for all the things we need. So we have the category URL, the post URL, the comments URL. All this URL allows prod operation, which means we can perform our prod operation on it. And without any further ado, let's go to the test server and start our test server. All right, so our test server is up and running, and let's check it out. Okay, so we have the endpoints as shown. So the admin to manage the admin as usual, and the blog app based on the app name we created, the URL was generated for it, and we have the auth as usual as well. So taking a look at the blog app, we have this. And this was the same thing we had in the last episode, which means we are in sync. So guys, what do you think? So technically, I think I spent around 25 minutes creating this, even though we have a lot of talks, a lot of description, a lot of explaining around it. So let's imagine a scenario where we don't have all that and I have an idea of what I want to create. It means, there's a possibility of creating this within just 10 minutes. And imagine having your API created in 10 minutes and it's deployed such that you can just test it any way you want. This gives you the leverage to take all your time developing your front end using the best UI out there. And with that said, you can actually even create your UI faster these days because we have lots of AI tools ready to assist you. So on that note, I think you get the gist. We have a lot of tools out there that are ready and capable to just allow you start springing up startups. So all that is really needed is the idea which to some extent the AI can do, but not entirely. So that's where you as a human comes in. So all these tools are out there to make you bring your ideas to life in a quick fashion. So yeah, that's about that. That's what Juice is all about. Create your API as fast as possible. Test and see if there is an issue. Fix and you move on. Okay? So again, like I've shown in the past, you can download this if you are comfortable with what you have and go and develop more on it later on. So if you enjoyed the episode, once again, kindly leave a thumbs up. It's going to play a major role in recommending my video to other viewers that might be interested. And again, I would appreciate having your comments just to give me an idea of what you feel about the whole thing, what you feel about the uh, presentation, and so on. Uh, finally, yeah, if you've not checked out Jews by now, why? Why? Yeah, kindly do, and let me know your feedback. So, guys, that will be all about this episode. And like I said before, I think in the next one, we can actually go into creating the blog UI proper because 
we have all the missing piece and we can do better this time around. I'll be expecting you in the next episode. And on that note, I'll be signing out.